Masters of Scale by Darren Triff, June Cohen, and Reid Hoffman. This summary is brought to you by Hook My Book. We dream of changing the world, of doing something never done. We want to disrupt old models and build new ones. We dream of reaching scale. According to the author, those who aspire to make an impact on the world should have a mindset of entrepreneurship. The author points out that it is not just about having the right idea, it is also about having the courage to start and the willingness to fail. The author also believes that it is important to have faith in one's idea and to be willing to face resistance in order to grow. Getting to know Catherine succeeded in her business, The Muse, after getting knows from some of the smartest and most successful investors in Silicon Valley and New York City. She trusted her gut and listened to the feedback she was getting from her users, which helped her make adjustments to her business and achieve success. The most overlooked opportunity among early-stage entrepreneurs is the information to be gathered from different kinds of numbers, a no can turn a good idea into a game-changing one. A no can clue you into the size of your idea. A no can help you refine your strategy and your goals. The gold is buried in the numbers. LinkedIn was founded in 2002 by Reid Hoffman and his co-founders and initially faced resistance from people who didn't understand its potential. However, by opening up the network and letting people share their professional details openly, LinkedIn became a viral success and was acquired by Microsoft for $26.2 billion in 2016. The first step when trying to get investors for your idea is to try to get a positive response from them. If they say no, then you need to move on and try to get a different investor. If they say no but give you some feedback, then you should try to use that feedback to improve your idea. If they say no and give you a negative response, then you need to be honest with yourself and decide if your idea is worth continuing. Start small. When starting a product, it is important to get feedback from early users to refine the product. This is a pre-scale moment where the product is refined based on direct feedback from users. This stage can be a golden period for some founders, but it may not feel that way at the time. Founders who focus on handcrafting their product instead of going big risk not having a successful product. The author advises starting small by hand-serving your customers instead of thinking about how to serve a large number of people. This will help you to focus on the customers who will be most important to your success. Start when you are broke. Mark Cuban says, when your back is against the wall, when you're broke and you have to come up with something, you've got nothing to lose. If you try and you fail, you're back where you started. You haven't lost anything, so why not try? Entrepreneurship is not about having a lightning strike or a ha moment, but rather it is about being persistent and always looking for new opportunities. Even if your first idea doesn't succeed, it may just lead you to your next big idea. Kevin started the app Bourbon which was simple and only had one feature which was to check into locations. He then found a partner in Mike Krieger and they focused on just one feature which was photos. They then pivoted to make the photo feature the main focus and made it easier to add filters. This led to Instagram being launched and becoming one of the most popular apps. The author says, an idea doesn't come out of one's brain perfectly formed, and that it takes many people to turn an idea into a product or company. One of the most important things that a founder can do is to talk about their idea to a lot of people, and to ask for feedback on what's wrong with it. Culture Netflix has a different culture than pure software. Reed Hastings believes that pure software would not have lasted because they had a culture built for process, while Netflix has a culture built to scale. Reed says that everyone is trying to add value by saying, here's a place we can improve what we do. The culture deck is not the golden tablets. It's a constantly evolving, living document. Culture is shaped by the individuals on the team, and it will change as the company grows. However, a company's culture can be preserved by establishing it from the beginning and making sure it is always evolving. To create a culture that is smart enough to evolve, companies should have first-principle thinkers who question what is best for the company, 
not blindly follow directions or stick to a tried-and-true process. This can be done by hiring employees who model for each other what it is like to be great at what they do, and by creating a company heritage that is loudly and proudly proclaimed from the get-go. By doing so, companies can avoid perpetuating fallacies, and will be able to harness the power of cognitive diversity. Growing fast, growing slow. Many entrepreneurs are always pushing to find new ways to get their products in front of customers. In order to do this, they often have to take risks and move quickly. However, they must also be careful not to go too fast, as this can lead to problems such as running out of money or not being able to sustain the growth they have achieved. To envision the specific kind of patience, picture a great blue heron, that elegant, stately bird with impossibly long legs and a dagger-like bill. A heron will stand perfectly still in a marsh. It will stand so still for so long that it almost looks painted into the landscape. And it might appear to be quite lazy, until it spots a fish. Then it strikes, with incredible speed and precision. Founders often dream of overnight success, but they don't think enough about what happens the following morning. When you're growing quickly, there will always be fires, inventory shortfalls, servers crashing, customers whose calls aren't answered. You won't always know which fire to stamp out first. And if you try to put out every fire at once, you'll only burn yourself out. That's why entrepreneurs have to learn to let fires burn, and sometimes even very large fires. In business, it's often important to move fast and make quick decisions to stay ahead of your competitors. Google, for example, tends to buy smaller companies instead of competing for dominance, to speed up the process of developing new products. Believe in your vision. Rana L. Kaliabi, founded Effectiva, a company that specializes in emotional AI. When Effectiva was starting out, they were approached by a venture capitalist who wanted them to pivot their company and focus on security, surveillance, and lie detection. Rana and her co-founder, Professor Rosalind Picard, decided that they did not want to do this and turned down the offer. They were eventually able to raise other funding from investors who believed in their vision and values. This story is a good reminder to entrepreneurs that money is not the only thing that matters, and that they should be careful about what industries they choose to venture into. When you're trying to do something that hasn't been done before, you often find yourself in a state of supreme ignorance. What enables entrepreneurs to thrive in those conditions is the speed at which they zip up a learning curve. Keep moving away from what you know. Success imprints even more strongly than failure. So when you've figured out something that works or you found success in a particular area, there's a natural tendency to stay put. But infinite learners know that if you stand still or keep doing the same things that worked in the past, the world will leave you behind. Watch what your customers do. Not, what they say. Google's founding team was obsessive about excellence in search, but they didn't really know what it meant. They surveyed users and found that people wanted fewer results per page, and that the number 10 was the best number. This discovery helped Google improve its search result speed. Surveys are great when you need to understand nuanced sentiment and feelings. But if you want to understand what your users will actually do, you need to watch them do things. Facebook was originally created for Harvard students, but when Zuckerberg tried to expand it to other universities, people there said that it was too exclusive. However, when Facebook expanded to other campuses, people there used it more. Mark Zuckerberg learned that people are very poor at predicting their own reactions to new things, and that's why you have to be willing to follow your customers wherever they lead you. Entrepreneurs bear a responsibility to society. Without the infrastructure of society, we wouldn't be able to create our businesses and reap the rewards of success. We should follow the principle of the Hippocratic Oath, first, do no harm. As entrepreneurs, we should strive to leave society better off than we found it. Finally remember, if a company has a mission that is rooted in goodness, and if you can effectively communicate that mission to the world and then live up to it, it can become one of the driving forces that helps you scale. End of the summary. Thanks for listening.